In this video, I'm going to show you where all of the SEO settings that Bubble has available for you are in your editor. Um, if you are building an application that needs to be exposed to search engines, you definitely want to look at these configurations and make sure that these are set up the proper way um, for your app to be found. Uh, so most of the settings are going to be found under the settings tab and then the SEO slash meta tags sub tab. One requirement is that your app does need to be on a paid plan. So if you're not on a paid plan, uh, none of this stuff is really going to go into effect. Um, so make sure that you do upgrade in order for everything to work properly. Uh, so the first section up here is labeled as Facebook and Twitter, but even outside of social networks, you still want to fill out the title, um, site name and description, even thumbnail um, for your application because this is what's going to be displayed when your app comes up in a search result. So like in Google, the, the heading of that search result and then that description that's right under it. Um, and then of course, if your app is shared via social media, these are the items that, are gonna, that will appear in that link preview. The SEO settings section down here uh, will allow you to expose a few things. By default, these are turned off, so you wanna make sure you have these checked. The first thing, expose type of tags for text elements. So when you have that checked, um, your text element here will have a new dropdown available to you. Of course, uh, if you're adding a text like this, Bubble's gonna apply this preset style. So remove the style and then you'll see this show up, HTML tag, for this element. Um, if you're familiar with SEO um, and tagging elements, there are uh, different ways to categorize text so that Google knows what's, um, you know, the heading, the, the top level heading of the page, then that subheading, and then, you know, the heading under that, or if it's just normal body text for your page. So this is where you would set those things. In addition to the text element, the image element will also have um, this new alt tag field become available so you can enter in an alternative um, text for the image. This is good if uh, you know the user's browser can't render the image for whatever reason, you'll have that text uh, to stand in for it. But in general, this is also um, something important for SEO to mark your images. A very literal description of the image is usually what goes there in a few words. Um, and then if you check the customized robots uh, text file, this will allow you to modify your application's robot text file. This is a more advanced thing. If you don't really know what this is, just leave it alone. Something that you do with your robots text file is to add in no follow links so that you can uh, make sure that uh, links don't get recognized or picked up by the search engines. They basically, they get ignored. However, Bubble recently added a new feature, um, so you can leave that unchecked, for the link element where you can mark it as a nofollow link right in this editor here. So this is a link element. I could mark that as nofollow and then that will make sure that the search engines ignore it and it doesn't affect your SEO rankings, okay? Um, but if you do want to modify that, you do have that option there. Exposing a site mile, uh, site mile, exposing a site map file. This will let you pick and choose what pages in your application you want your search engines to be able to pick up and crawl. So you can check those here. Also note that you can upload your own site map file at the very bottom of this section here. Where, uh, where you can host files in the root directory. So you can upload just a plain text file with your sitemap, uh, give it a name, save it. And if you're familiar with the Google Webmasters um, settings, you're, you're gonna wanna go there anyway to make sure that your application is being properly crawled and there aren't any errors or anything. Um, it's webmasters, let's see google.com forward slash webmasters. Um, this is definitely something you want to look at outside of Bubble as well to make sure that Google is picking you up properly. Uh, it's not running into any errors or finding weird links or anything like that. Uh, so if you, for example, upload your own sitemap file, you would wanna submit that to your app that you've added to Google Webmasters and make sure that it's finding it properly. Okay, and right above this section here is 301 redirections. So this is really useful if you are, for example, moving your application from one domain to a completely other domain, but the first, the older previous domain 
was getting picked up by Google and you had some rankings there and uh, it has this reputation now and you've done really well for it. You don't want to lose all of that by moving to a completely new domain. So a 301 redirect will allow you to um, have search engines recognize that one URL is now being replaced by another URL. Um, that's something that you can read about certainly, um, but this is the section that you want to do it. Again, the Google Webmaster site also lets you add in 301 redirections. The only other area that I want to point out is your domain and email section. Let me actually open up a different app. Okay, so when you've set up a custom domain uh, for your application, you definitely want to have this checked here, redirect all requests to the domain so that your bubble hosted application with the internal app name is no longer being recognized and all requests to it um, are forwarded to your custom domain. This is definitely something you want to check, especially if you want your application's custom domain to be found in search engine results. Those are just the primary settings that you should be aware of. Of course, if you want to get more detailed and advanced with your SEO configuration, you definitely want to have your site set up with Google Webmasters. And if you know what you're doing, you can modify your uh, site's headers and bodies. You can also do that on a page level. Every single page, if you go to the property editor for it, you have a uh, page level header fields that you can modify here, as well as title and description and images for the page itself. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you get notified every time there is a new tutorial. Thanks guys.